So we are going live in three, two, one. So good evening and welcome to this uh, fifth episode of uh, PG Teaching Course from D.Y. Patil New Mumbai. And for further introduction of the session, I'll hand it over to Dr. Dar, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Ashok. Once again, good evening, everyone, uh, for this Diva Patil and Ortho TV combined program. Uh, today, we have uh, Dr. Maitre, uh, who is a postgraduate or master's, who will be presenting a spine case today. As usual, we have our HOD, Dr. Kais Sabut, and Dr. Sachin Kare, who is a professor in our department, and I'll be there. And then there's Dr. Rohan Gala, who is a spine surgeon with our department. He will be, they will be acting as the examiners. The format is same. Uh, it will be a live presentation. This is going on live simultaneously. And uh, questions, uh, the faculty will ask the questions. If there are any questions, you can pass it on to our webmaster, Dr. Ashok, and we will be able to convey it to the presenter. So without wasting any time, I invite Dr. Maitre to start the case. Thank you very much. Good evening, respected faculty members. I would like to uh, start with my spine examination presentation today. Uh, my patient, 33, 33 years old female, resident of Nirul, hailing from Rajasthan, housewife by occupation, came to Dr. Devi Patil Hospital with the chief complaints of pain in mid-back since the past 11 months. Patient was apparently all right 11 months back when she started experiencing pain, which was dull aching, insidious in onset, gradually progressive, aggravated on movement and partially relieved at rest. Pain was localized and did not radiate to either of the lower limbs. There was no tingling sensation. Patient uh, went to a local doctor in a local hospital and was given pain medications and injectables for the same, after which she got relief from the pain for about eight months. There was no history of fall or trauma or heavy weight lifting. Patient also gives complaints of fever since the past one month which is low-grade, intermittent, and has evening rise. There is no other history of uh, weight loss or night sweats currently. There is no history of pain on rest. There is no history of diabetes mellitus, hypertension, bronchial asthma, or epilepsy. There is no history of any known, uh, known drug allergies. Patient has a past history of tuberculosis approximately eight years ago, for which she, she was started on anti-tubercular therapy for six months. After six months, she discontinued the therapy. Patient also gives history of weight loss, night sweats, and evening rise of temperature eight years back when she had history of pulmonary <coughs> tuberculosis. Patient also gives history of lower segment cesarean section, which she underwent in 2009 and 2012 for two deliveries. There was history of blood transfusion as well. There is no history of COVID-19 infection. She, is, she has been vaccinated with one dose. In her family, there are no similar complaints or the complaints of cox in the family. Patient follows a mixed Indian diet with a good appetite. She also has a regular sleep cycle and her bowel and bladder movements are normal. There is no history of tobacco chewing, tobacco smoking or alcohol consumption. In obstetric history, patient has a regular menses of 28 days cycle. She also has had a normal delivery and two caesarean sections. Coming to my general examination, patient is hey, conscious corporal. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. So on yes, history, sir. what is yes, the differential diagnosis? So on my history, patient's differentials would be case of mid-back pain since the past 11 months, which could be secondary to tuberculosis of the spine, low-grade pyogenic infection. What, is the what do you mean by tuberculosis of the spine exactly? Uh, so, tuberculous infection of the spine at a different junction, sir. No, no. So, you mean to say this is mid-back pain, right? And you said yes, she does not have any night pain or anything. So, you yes, mean sir. to say, okay, is there a mechanical component to this or not? I mean, what? Is TB spine a diagnosis or do you have better words to put this in? So, uh, it could be a case of infective spondylodiscitis as well. 
infective spondylodiscitis do you think spondylodiscitis is always infective uh, no sir you can no. differentiate it no you think spondylodiscitis is something else uh, no sir it can be infective it can be a uh, traumatic it is always it infective be... there is nothing called as infective spondylodiscitis right it can be tubercular spondylodiscitis or pyogenic spondylodiscitis right okay or yes. fungal or whatever yes so uh, i mean what is one other differential like you have gone to the point of you know asking the obstetric history of the patient which i do not yes. know why but i will come back to that uh, coming to this which is one more important differential that you feel that will be the biggest mimicker of a tb spine patient although rare but you have to you know if you are actually ruling out negative history to this extent where you are you have mentioned so many things which is one important thing that you have missed out can you figure or which is one big mimicker of tb spine sir it can be a primary uh, tumor of the spinal cord primary tumor no no on on infective mm-hmm. lines only which is one important differential that i would also ask i'm not saying that it is very common but because you have uh, extensively uh, eliminated so many things i'm just asking you okay did sir, you uh, did you try to Yes, an enteric fever or uh, any consumption enteric of unpasteurized. Yes. Okay, and and what would that lead to? So it could lead like to uh, my severe would... muscle spasms. No, no, no. My unpasteurized milk. Ah, uh, so brucellosis. A uh, brucellosis. So any animal husbandry or any contact with cattle or this or that you will have to ask, right? Because yes, brucellosis yes. will somewhere down the line will be like one of the first important mimickers of tuberculosis. so yes. while talking about negative history if at all you are as extensive as you are you should always uh, remember the contact with cattle or whether he is into animal husbandry or whatever okay okay sir thank you sir no. uh, one more one more thing ha um, sir please go ahead nahi nahi ab boli boli one more thing that like, always try to become give more differentials on this like don't be one specific on one diagnosis okay sir yes sir. okay yeah. there are one more yes yeah. ha So, so what do you mean by night pain actually uh sir so night pain usually occurs because the muscle spasms are relieved during night so the inflammatory surfaces undergo friction amongst themselves uh, okay. subchondral zones and the facetal joints that's why sir there is excruciating pain at night you mean to say okay, this is mid back pain right so uh, yes, you mean to where are the nerve endings actually present for it to you know actually cause this pain uh sir beneath the subchondral uh, layer sir of the cartilage so how, how do you think is that happening i mean uh so once I mean, the give, surfaces huh. rub against each other okay the subchondral region erodes of following to exposure of the nerve endings that leads to uh-huh. the pain sir yeah they rub against each other so this is more so in a case of spondylodiscitis where the disc is kind of you know um, yeah, i mean disc is shrunken and you know you have the exposed uh, upper part of one end plate of the upper vertebra inferior end plate and the lower uh, vertebra upper end plate will kind of rub against each other when the muscle spasm is deadly but that is essentially night cries where else can you get night pain does a tumor patient have pain at night like uh, yes sir if i'm suspecting a primary or a okay. yes, uh, rest so pain okay rest so we have rest, rest pain also and night pain so uh, it's mostly okay. due so, to the cytokines which increase hmm. and uh, corticosteroid corticose cortisol levels which decrease in the evening and are highest in the morning so hmm. hence so, the patient gets pain at yeah so that mostly. is the time when you have all those prostaglandins and everything being released excessively because there is no cortisol which is kind of you know uh, kind of suppressing them uh, during that particular um, uh, um, time window okay yes yes yeah. go ahead sir saman sir good evening Sir, you want to ask anything? Just summarize the history for Saman sir, please. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. So, a thirty-three-year-old yeah. female uh, complains of pain and mid-back since the past eleven months. There was no history of fall, trauma, heavy weight lifting. Uh, patient had had history of pulmonary tuberculosis eight years back, for which she took uh, anti-tubercular drugs for a period of six months. My audible. Yes. Sir. Okay. 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 My third good presentation is too. No problem. Go ahead with uh, other. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Yes. The general examination and the local. Yes. 
So coming to the general examination, my patient is conscious, cooperative, and well oriented in time, place, and person. Her pulse currently is 92 beats per minute. Her blood pressure is 130 by 90 millimeters of mercury. Her respiratory rate is 19 breaths per minute, and her SpO2 on Romer is 98 percent. Patient has no signs of pallor, ictus, lumping, cyanosis, lymphadenopathy, or edema. Why do you do check the, for uh, saturation? Uh, so, as the, the patient has history of pulmonary cox, so, uh, so? hence. Uh, so it can be uh, a relapse or exacerbation again, a remission, sir, not exacerbation. Hence, sir, That's to rule true. out that. I so how saturation will help? Previously, you you people used in the long test, nobody used to tell about saturation. Post pandemic, everybody started talking about saturation in every long case. in this case it is relevant but you should know the reason yes she had a old tuberculosis no yes sir yes sir old tuberculosis some 7 8 years back yes sir so because of fibrosis a, ah yes, because of pulmonary fibrosis fibrosis yes sir. or there is pleurisy dry pleurisy if it is there yes sir so that you should know the baseline saturation proceed yes sir Yes. So coming to the systemic examination on cardiovascular examination, both the heart sounds are heard and no murmurs were heard. On respiratory examination, air entry is bilaterally equal with no vesicular breath sounds. Uh, on coming to gastrointestinal examination, per abdomen there is no tenderness and bowel sounds are heard. On central nervous system examination, patient is conscious, cooperative, and well oriented in time, place, and person. Coming to the local examination. I have examined my patient in standing, sitting, supine, and prone position from the front, sides, and back. On inspection, the head is placed centrally. Bilateral shoulders are at the same level. Spine of scapula and inferior angle of the scapula are at the same level. The posterior superior iliac spine is at the same level. There is a fine needle biopsy scar present at D10 level. Patient also has a, a normal central furrow. the hairline is at normal level and there are no sinuses dilated veins or cafe ole spots seen why you have commented yeah. about the hairline so hairline can be low in syndrome such as klippel field where there is short neck and short stature of the patient and winking uh, and the elevation of the scapula so in cases of turner What syndrome or down syndrome uh, so i don't know sir Okay, proceed. For base, I mean, uh, which are the important cranial nerves? Why Saman sir must ask you this question? Is which are the hmm. central nervous system examination, right? So, which are the cranial yes. nerves which I would want to examine, which are relevant pertaining to a spine spine case? I mean, not pertaining to this case, but if at all I have to do some examination, I would say that this, 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 or these cranial nerves are eliminated first on history and then on examination. How do you do that? Uh, so cranial nerve such as spinal accessory, which is the eleventh cranial nerve, motor cranial nerve. I would like to examine that. Spinal accessory is eleventh. Eleventh, yes. Sir. Okay. Any other? What are the things that you ask? Like suppose if you have a patient of say. Upper cervical anomaly or a craniovertebral junction anomaly or some some instability at the atlanto axial joint. So there are four few things that you ask on history which which would you know give you a telltale sign saying that you know these these are the things which are actually seen because of certain things and then similarly those are the cranial nerves which you always ask for or look out for or examine. What are they? Sir, uh, sir, pertaining to sensory or motor, sir, I didn't understand. No, no. You have commented low hairline, no? Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, that's why all these questions come. So, a examiner will expect you. You will know for what reasons you are telling low hairline is normal. Mm. Then you must expect one or two questions on uh, low hairline. Yes, sir. Okay, mm. find out. Go sit. D ten. Pe tune you you found out a scar, right? At D ten. Yes, sir. How did you calculate D ten? 
so the spine of the scapula is at the D4 level and the inferior border of scapula is at D7 D7 level i counted okay. the vertebras after that sir okay but is there another better way to do that a more accurate way uh, uh, so start from C7 and which is the most prominent process and then yes. down down the spine yes what yeah, it is called one. so most prominent pro- uh, uh it is called what spine it is called vertebra prominence okay barabar hai na re baba ron ha sir ha sir and, and this scar that you saw was paraspinal or central the so central sir central as in centering over the spinous process uh sir a bit lateral to the spinous process sir so that is paraspinal right so why yes. do you think there is a scar there what could have happened there sir a invasive procedure such as spine needle biopsy might have happened okay ओके फाइन ओके ठीक है चलो आगे एंड मैत्रोन इंस्पेक्शन ट्राइ टू अवॉइड टेलिंग द लेवल्स बिकॉज़ ऑन इंस्पेक्शन यू डोंट काउंट ना जस्ट बी मोर प्रेसिड अपर अपर प्रोसीड प्रोसीड बॉय यस वेयर इट्स ऑन पल्पेशन ऑन पल्पेशन ऑल इंस्पेक्टरी फाइंडिंग्स आर परमानेंट ऑन पल्पेशन सर सो आई हैव सीन फॉर द स्वेलिंग देयर इज नो स्वेलिंग देयर इज टेंडरनेस प्रेजेंट एट द लेवल ऑफ B10 B11 and b12 l1 vertebras there is presence of paraspinal muscle spasm and sir uh, there is no structural deformity seen there is local rise in temperature also seen so coming to the me- uh, range of motion the patient has a painful and restricted range of motion coming to the special tests so on so special tests which, which tenderness was positive you said you said tenderness from d10 to l1 what type yes sir so it was deep thrust tenderness positive sir only deep thrust superficial nahi tha nahi sir rotatory bhi nahi tha uh sir rotatory not a lot you sir. must have not checked no anyway, sir check come you have checked okay so yes, uh, you have also checked and you have also mentioned that there is no swelling anywhere na where where can you possibly see your swelling right coming from the uh, thorax up to the uh, uh, you know up to your hips where all can you manifest a cold abscess in a cox space sir a cold abscess in the thoracic and uh, sir lumbar region it can start from the mediastinum sir it can be in the upper thoracic or lower thoracic depending it can be in the intrapleural or extrapleural spaces it can be along the intercostal nerves it can also be seen uh, on the uh, paraspinal regions near the iliac fossa it mm-hmm. can also be seen along the inguinal ligament on the uh, also in the petit triangle and scapula triangle sir okay proceed proceed uh so on special tests uh the femoral nerve stress test is negative straight leg raising test is full and free a bragard test and a uh, boasting test of macnab is negative also sir i have examined uh, the cervical spine and both the hips for sacroiliacus sir and uh, so coming to the neurology all higher mental functions are normal all the 12 cranial nerves are normal coming to the motor examination the patient has had has good nutrition of both the lower limb and upper limb muscles the tone is normal on uh, grading of power power is bilateral upper limb and lower limb 5 by 5 reflexes in bilateral knee jerks are brisk and ankle jerk sub brisk but and plantar reflex is down going there are no involuntary movements and coordination of the patient is normal coming to the sensory findings okay, okay, one. yes sir yeah. yes sir. yes sir. how will you examine the tone in the lower limb just demonstrate uh, yes sir anti appe test karunga theek hai So first I'll explain the procedure to the patient. आपका पैर लूज छोड़ना ठीक है मैं मोड़ूंगा और सीधा करूंगा दोनों पैर सीधे रखो ढीला छोड़ो आंटी ढीला छोड़ो पूरा ढीला छोड़ो ढीला छोड़ो That is how you look for tone. 
the tone of the lower limbs is normal sir no no the how can you say that it is normal i said it is hypotonic can you disprove this based on what you just did is that how you examine your tone your tone in the lower limbs so i was uh, passively extending and flexing the lower limbs ha huh? so and there was no uh, uh, now let's just say that there is hypertonia now okay because you yes, have sir. presented i think a, a normo with no myelopathy and everything so your viva is supposed to go there so either way yes. can you can you tell me what's a spastic kick so a spastic kick would be seen uh in pyramidal region sir which involve the corticospinal tracts so you think any patient with myelopathy compressive myelopathy with excessive tone will not show spastic kick anywhere or any condition which has increased yes, tone and yes. increase let's just say it has the patient has spasticity will he show that or will he manifest that or not what's a spastic kick one second how do you grade spasticity or how do you grade tone two and third how yes. do you define tone uh, so spasticity is graded according to ashworth scale grade 0 so, is uh, no spasticity if complete full range of motion grade 1 mm-hmm. would be a s- slight increase in the tone grade 2 would be a higher increase in the tone where a flexion is normal but extension is in grade 3 would be a fatigable clonus where there is partial flexion and grade 4 would be unfatigable clonus which has which the uh, limb is rigid so you can't flex or extend and so tone is uh, defined as the continuous partial state of contraction of the muscle in the relaxed state on partial spacing sorry mm, okay so okay. firstly you have to so know for, two things yeah. now okay they are no longer are using ashworth scale there is something called as the modified ashworth scale which is used secondly okay. you have to read up about all the methods how to elicit tone in the upper and the lower limbs where you can you know manifest spastic kick easily third is what we used to do is we used to just lift the lower limb passively in the air and we should just allow it to fall if the patient you know kind of you 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 get that catch again and it will not fall type that is one way to elicit tone in the lower limb because tone is a spasticity is always velocity dependent so you just yes. raise your leg and you allow it to drop okay so there is some velocity which is generated in the same time the patient will be you know beech mein catch aa jayega where it will be stopped and then it will fall okay and if yes. it is completely flaccid it will free fall are you understanding okay, so this is yes, how you sir. gauge uh, like completely like a hypo a normo and a hypertonic patient okay secondly okay, okay, speaking of tone so what are the other ways how you would look for uh, let, let's just say i i say ke uh, you know this patient is now having like a uh, brisk uh, exaggerated reflexes okay and uh, he has hypertonia so now what all will you see uh in your sensory examination and what all will you see in your motor examination like what can be the positive findings here so in motor examination i will most probably get uman signs which are uh, increased tone brisk reflexes then sir mm-hmm. uh, i will also see uh, a few uh, reflexes which are seen only in uman uh, such as uh, sir a trombner sign chadox sign and yes sir and inverted supinator reflex these are these are inverted supinator to upper limb ka ho gaya ye jo yes, chadok aur ye tromner bola these are other ways of eliciting babinski okay but okay. you never spoke about other th- if you are really into umn and if you want to f- f- figure out you have not mentioned about abdominal reflexes are they important yes sir they are absolutely reflexes yes hey, you have to comment what we do normally ha huh. okay sir don't yes, sir. don't talk high five things then the chances yes. of are very high yes why inverter supinator request inverse supinator you have to talk now yes you have already examined the cervical spine she does not have any complaints in the upper extremities so it's a yes. definitive case of whatever cock spine at the level of d10 and below yes sir so now your topic will go somewhere else and which you will not be able to answer ask you what is men's men's reflex particular case and what we check normally in the opd and the wards yes sir. understood yeah. so but- yes, butala sir. sir has posed a nice question what is hoffman's reflex 
यही तो बोला ना मंडल रिफ्लेक्स यस या सो हॉफमैन्स रिफ्लेक्स इज अ यूएमएन साइन अपॉन अपर मोटर न्यूरॉन लीजन साइन इन व्हिच यू होल्ड द मिडिल फैलेंक्स ऑफ द पेशेंट्स फिंगर एंड ट्राई टू टैप ऑन द डिस्टल फैलेंक्स यू विल सी अ पिंसर मूवमेंट ऑफ द थंब एंड इंडेक्स फिंगर कमिंग टुवर्ड्स ईच अदर दिस सजेस्टिव ऑफ यूएमएन लीजन why 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 do you think that happens actually uh so the voluntary uh so voluntary inhibition is uh hampered sir in that no that from the content but anyway read it okay there is a book okay. there is a lovely book for all you post graduates huh? at least in neuro examination there are certain things where rational to all the tests that you are performing is very essential so these medicine guys use this book called de jong okay it's a clinical book of neurological examination read it and at least understand the rationale as to why do you do everything and what is the interpretation of everything it is beautifully given okay, okay. next time yes, you sir. should read that anyway okay. coming yes. to abdominal reflex okay. how do you elicit an abdominal reflex uh so you uh, for abdominal reflex you uh, go from the periphery towards the umbilicus with slight strokes and you will see a uh, movement of the skin on around the umbilicus for the same it's a superficial reflex okay so as you said there is only one positive finding on your examination yes, the hyper reflexia right with yes, tone normal yes. was demonstrated yes, the hyper reflexia you said the knee is yes, hyper आपका पैर मेरे हाथ पे पूरा ढीला छोड़ना ठीक है ढीला छोड़ो पूरा पूरा ढीला दोनों हाथ ऐसे करो खींचो नीला चढ़ो आंटी वॉट यू आर सपोज टू सी दिस सो वी आर सपोज टू सी कॉन्ट्रेक्शन ऑफ द क्वारिसेप्स एंड एक्सटेंशन ऑफ यू आर क्लोज टू द्वारिसेप्स ना देन नो सर आई कैन सी फ्रॉम ठीक है ठीक है normally hyper reflex sir with normal tone is not associated but okay no problem sir go ahead with other positive things yes uh, so on sensory examination patient has a normal tactile discrimination and sensations of pain temperature through touch and fine touch patient has uh, no other sensory loss so coming to bowel and bladder movements they are normal and uh, okay uh, one minute uh, i say the patient uh, ye a uh, patient has uh, pain uh, nahi normal sensations to both pin prick and cotton wisp can you interpret why i used both those terms uh so cotton is used for uh, fine touch and uh, pin prick is used for tactile discrimination tactile discrimination okay not crude touch uh sir no sir okay so basically fine touch what are the columns where fine touch is uh, you know what are the columns involved in fine touch so a uh, fine touch involves dorsal columns sir facilis cuneatus and facilis gracilis yes gracilis okay fine gracilis uh, okay very good yes. go ahead what about the pain uh, sir, temperature uh, hmm. so pain temperature and crude touch are done by spinothalamic tracts which are anterior and lateral both are ascending tracts hmm. pain pain on the left side is absent means what it indicates uh so it pain means so on the left side is absent absent it means sir uh, there could be a lesion at the level of uh, spinal cord on the opposite side sir because it's contralateral as soon as they enter the anterior horn they decussate and go to the opposite side over. Hmm. over yes and always remember the fibers for fine touch proprioception they are post dorsal column these are the fibers which go uncrossed okay yes and that is yes. how once you once you have these questions like brown sequard and all that you have touch yes. pain temperature going off the opposite side and a dorsal column wala uh, uh, features going on the same side okay same sir yes sir yeah good proceed yes sir uh, sir coming to my diagnosis my patient a 33 year old female is a case of infective spondylodiscitis at the level of d10 d11 d12 l1 which is most likely secondary to tuberculosis of the spine 
and or a low grade pyogenic infection any functional disability uh so gate of the patient is antalgic mm. and guarding mm so uh, suppose if i say that this patient is spastic okay what yes, is sir. the kind of gate that he will present you say spastic 4 plus hai walker hai he is a walker yes, with spasticity how will he walk uh so he'll have a high step edge gate sir high step gate uh so it's a circumduction gate bilateral circumduction circumduction gate, gate. What you how get? does a myelopathic what when do you get a high stepped gait please tell me uh, so when there is a weakness or not spastic so when you have a foot drop yes a foot drop ah uh, so then what kind of gait will a myelopathic patient present to you with so uh, a stooping gait sir stooping sab pad ke aaya sab kuch bolega ek ek line mein this is this is no guess work matter wrong hai ye sorry sir. it is a broad based gait a broad based gait why do you have a broad based gait in a patient with spasticity we say it is a spastic broad based gait why what is broad based okay okay so no or you don't know then read okay chalo proceed gotala no sir aapko puchna hai what are the grades of paraplegia uh so there are uh, in all sir four grades of paraplegia or uh, quad paraplegia so grade 1 is when the patient does not know about its neurodeficits and a uh, physician elicits a plantar extensor reflex grade 2 is where the patient knows about the deficits and manages to walk with support grade 3 would be a uh, paralysis in uh, extension sir with uh, muscle spasms and less than sen- less than 50% of sensory loss and grade 4 would be uh, flexor spasms and paralysis in uh, flexion with more than 50% of the sensory loss bladder bowel so bladder bowel is, is involved in the grade 4 sir okay what is the difference between late onset okay, and th- early onset paraplegia so early onset paraplegia occurs uh, within 2 years of onset of the disease and late onset occurs after 2 years and sir uh, early onset is has a good prognosis and late onset or heel stage has a, a bad prognosis sir. what are the causes Ekali of early Ekali. onset uh, so causes of causes of early onset can be uh, inflammatory edema compressive uh, then sir vas- inflammatory vasculitis and uh, any other pyogenic infections sir what of normal things what you are just Materia. any other pyogenic infection kya hota hai अरे वो तुझे पूछ रहे हैं ड्यूबरक्यूलोसिस में अर्ली ऑनसेट पैराप्लेजिया का कॉजेस क्या है सर इट्स मोस्टली ड्यू टू सर द ग्रैनुलेशन टिश्यू द केसियस केसियस टिश्यू एंड एब्सेस और पस एंड द कॉर्ड कंप्रेस कंप्रेस यस सर व्हाट इज द कॉज ऑफ लेट ऑनसेट पैराप्लेजिया सर लेट ऑनसेट पैराप्लेजिया इज मोस्टली ड्यू टू द हील्ड फाइब्रोसिस which causes uh, extra stretching of the spinal cord what is the most common cause of late onset paraplegia what happens when what happens when you leave cox untreated where you had to treat them or if you don't stabilize them what happens you are not kaha ka disease hai anterior disease hai posterior disease hai anterior anterior segment disease ओके सो क्या होगा फिर अगर एंटीरियरली कुछ तेरा हाइट लॉस हो गया ये हो गया व्हाट विल हैपन वन ऑफ द डिजीज हां सो काइफोटिक डिफॉर्मिटी इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपोर्टेंट कॉजेस ऑफ लेट ऑनसेट दैट इज व्हाई ऑल दीस पीडियाट्रिक किड्स दैट वी यू नो ट्रीट यू हैव टू मॉनिटर देम अप टिल द द एज ऑफ देयर मैच्योरिटी बिकॉज़ व्हेनेवर दे अटेन दिस ग्रोथ स्पर्ट इफ देयर इज एनी रेसिडुअल काइफोसिस व्हिच इज लेफ्ट 
it will increase and it will fire and then you know you you have to very strictly monitor them every two yearly just to see if they are okay or not because a lot of people then come with spasticity early myelopathic features and sometimes even undergo deficit so this is one yes. of the reasons why you can't leave them untreated if you have at least one to one and a half level vertebral height loss at crucial levels like the cervical thoracic or the dorsal lumbar junction because they are tend to they tend to increase in kyphosis every time they have their growth growth spurt around 5 years then again around 13 to 15 whenever okay yes sir yes thank you sir proceed now what you will do for your diagnosis uh, now uh, so my diagnosis is a 30 year old female who is resident of neeroon housewife by occupation a case of infectious spondylodiscitis at d10 d11 d12 l1 level with no neurological deficit or bowel bladder involvement with uh, so uh, with disability as pain functional disability as pain how will you proceed for the uh-huh. patient today uh, so i would firstly like to get her blood investigations done and uh, an x ray done sir show the x rays latest x rays yes and let the patient go no sir thank you yeah and dr arpit has a very good question that how mm-hmm. did you attain your diagnosis of so many levels was there any specific test that you had performed that you could say that you know itne sare level pe hai ye sara diagnosis so uh, mostly sir the tenderness which was present was cement uh, present on that segment sir okay that is the only reason why you're saying it is such an extensive thing clinically Yes. Oh. Yeah, I think LS spine. DL spine, huh? Yes, sir. So this is an X-ray of the uh, dorsal lumbar spine, showing the lateral and anteroposterior views. So after counting the vertebrae from L5 going upwards, there is reduced disc space at D12 and L1 levels. as well as b11 and b12 levels there is erosion of paradiscal margins as well and uh, presence of osteopenia sir now what is the other way of counting i say i can without looking at alpha i will i mean uh, you know another estimate of how to count where you are So the twelfth rib would be attached to the transverse process of yeah the, the incomplete rib. rib. Okay, if you would have stretched your AP X-ray, you would have found yes, out that that rib there is an incomplete rib. Okay, so that yes, would sir. be giving you a rough estimate. But also, tomare dorsal spine ke X-ray mein you have to count the ribs from top to bottom. Sometimes even that may kind of misguide you. Okay, but yes, one sir. more way to gauge it is by the twelfth rib. And secondly. Okay. Uh, what do you think is the earliest radiological manifestation of a uh, tubercular spondylodiscitis? So the earliest manifestation would be uh, some, a presence of uh, marginal erosion of the disc, uh, disc space around no. the disc space. No, no, no. no. The- what is the first sign where you will get decreased uh, first uh-huh. sign in tubercular cis- spine? सर ऑलमोस्ट आपने आंसर बट डिक्रीज दिस इट इज द डिक्रीज स्पेस इन एडजॉइनिंग वर्टेब्रा व्हाट इज द रीजन फॉर दैट सर आई कुडंट हियर यू फॉर अ सेकंड सर व्हाट इज द रीजन फॉर द डिक्रीज इन द जॉइंट स्पेस बिटवीन द सर ट्यूबरक्लोसिस बीइंग अ most of the common lesions of the tuberculosis are around paradiscal sir so that's why the disc gets eroded no no hence reason it might be because blood supply maitre sir yes sir this has blood supply uh yes sir sir uh, the this has blood the, supply no sir sorry sir <laughs> so i didn't hear this <laughs> sorry sir this does not have blood in my segment So uh, sorry, sir. Your voice was breaking. What do you mean by one spinal segment? What do you mean by one mountain segment? Uh, so spinal segment uh, correlates with the uh, vertebra, sir, of the vertebral canal. So, uh, so the uh, C one to C seven are 
uh, adjacent sir final segments on the vertebral column so after no, 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 you're not getting sir's question sir uh, is not taking yes, you sir. into cervical to sacrum here sir is okay, saying sir. what comprises what does a motion segment comprise of what are the elements or what are the components of a motion simple spine motion segment so the uh, so the uh, segments where the mo- uh, maximum amount of motion occurs sir what the question uh, was what the question. there is a reduced joint space yes, is sir. the first sign of tuberculosis so yes, the sir. answer is related to what dr butala has asked you what is the blood supply how is the blood supply of one segment one spinal segment so the uh, blood supply is sir according to uh, as ep- a epiphyseal arteries around the vertebras so how does it supply sir it supplies uh, so through the vertebra sir and uh, between the vertebra sir no nah. it supplies to the inferior border of the vertebra above and superior border of the vertebra below okay sir okay sir. that's why you get reduced joint space rohan am okay. i right yes sir so again you know sir ka question was apt and now you have to still explain you know you can't get away in this by i'll tell you so now sir told you where the blood supply is where both the entrails yes, are sir. involved say the inferior part yes, of sir. the upper and the superior part of the lower so now aage yes. hoga kya now you know that your arteries are there and now i will give you a hint saying that the tb is uh, because of the hematogenous spread so now aage kya hoga what uh, will happen so why the, does the disc ha uh, space reduce so uh, i don't know sir ha are uh, uh, you think the disc is vascular or not uh, no sir no so then how does the disc receive its nutrition via uh So, via diffusion no through the pores in the end plates they are the ones yes, who sir. allow that diffusion so if you destroy those end plates because of the segmental artery where the hematogenous spread ke karan the tuberculous bacteria will sit there and destroy those parts it will no longer carry the process of diffusion yes sir. so then the disc will eventually shrink because it is losing its nutrition and yes, that is why reduced disc space will be the first sign yes Okay, the idea yes, of doing sir, this sir. case presentation is not just you know, I mean, uh, <laughs> mugging up things and presenting, but you should know why everything happens. Na? You should have an answer for everything. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or at least postulate some theory. Yes. Butala sir, आपको पूछना है X-ray पे please. What are the typical presentation of pox? So, a typical presentation, sir, uh, there will be decreased fever. वर्टिब्रा How will you proceed? Uh, so I would like to get an MRI done as well. Lago, hmm. MRI lago. Patient ko pace me kare kya karega? So uh, I would get a, a Mars MRI, sir. What is that? Mars MRI or a USG? Pace me kare. So a USG, sir. Ah? USG, sir. ultrasonography usg usg will show you what what is there in the spine uh so no so it can show us uh, abscess and cold abscesses and in what in the spine so on the paraspinal region sir uh, what how will you track the uh, this thing other things then what will you do Uh, I don't know, sir. Okay, no problem. Proceed. Tell me the name of it. Yes, sir. So, uh, so this is an MRI uh, with whole spine screening, sir. So this is a T2 weighted image. 
So I can see disk erosions present at D10, D uh, between D10 and D11, and D12 and L1 vertebra. Sir. There is also presence of uh, marrow edema and uh, abscess around the D10 and D11 vertebra. Sir. Where is the abscess located? So uh, I I would like to show the uh, coronal section, sir, for it. नहीं सजेटल में बोलना कि कहाँ दिखता है आपसे हाँ तो उसको उसको ऑर्थोपेडिक टर्म्स में क्या बोलेंगे वेर इज आपसे सब प्री प्री वर्टिबल आपसे सर एंड एंड पैरा वर्टिबल आपसे सर पैरा यहाँ पे कैसे पैरा दिखेगा यहाँ पे सिर्फ प्री वर्टिबल दिख सकता है और एपिड्यूरल दिख सकता है ना यस सर एपिड्यूरल कंप्रेशन है ना उधर पीछे देखो यस स I mean du dural compression तो है ना तो उसका pre vertebral extension दिखेगा para vertebral के लिए तो axial cut लगाना पड़ेगा लगाओ yes axial cuts so over here sir मुझे नहीं दिखा रहा है axial cut कहाँ है नहीं नहीं एक्चुअल कट तेरे पीपीटी में नहीं है नहीं सर है सर यू डोंट वेस्ट टाइम कोरोनल सर कोरोनल आंसर एक्सेल सर सामन सर कैन यू सी द कट सर नो डू नॉट सी इवन आई कैन सो वी लोडेड इट सर आई आई जस्ट टेक द इश्यू सर Yes, now I can see. Yeah, my dear, talk me. Ah, uh, so you can see the abscess around D10, D11 vertebras, which is a para vertebral abscess. Also, sir, on uh, coronal section, sir, we can see a uh, hyper intense segments and white shadows, opacities seen on both sides of the vertebra, which could suggest of a para vertebral abscess. Okay, how will you manage now, this patient? You have seen the X-ray, you have seen the MRI, you know the yes. history of the patient, you have examined the patient. Yes, Maitre. Doctor yes, Maitre. Sir. Yes, sir. I am saying this is a tumor. Why do you say there is a cox? Uh, sir, there is uh, no pain at rest, sir, and uh, no. No, no. On MRI. MRI. So on MRI, there are no skip lesions seen, sir. So. And a niche. And. Abhi, ye view jo samne hai, usme niche hai. एक वर्टिब्रा छोड़ के ही है ना डी टेन इलेवन और ट्वेल्व वन में है इलेवन ट्वेल्व छोड़ के हुआ तो ये तो स्किप लीजन है स्किप लीजन इज अल मार्क ऑफ कॉक्स तो फिर तो सर पूछ रहे हैं कि ये ट्यूमर क्यों नहीं है So, uh, uh, can the person holding the laptop take it to the sagittal uh, picture, please? And then Maitre can answer. Maitre, you continue answering. We'll explain yes. it later. You have any laser pointer there? Um, one second, I'll check. Ah, uh, keep this. Keep this with you. Yeah. Ah, uh. yes. Tell us why this is not tumor, neoplastic region. Um, so there would be osteoblastic and osteolytic lesions, sir, uh, in a tumor. You tell us what is there in this. Is me kya hai ki that is what is clear cut of cox. Uh, so there is paradiscal erosions with abscess, sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, so okay. there is no osteoblastic or lytic lesions. एक है तो लाइसिस ही है ना सॉरी सर ये सब ब्लास्टिक लीजेंस नहीं है सर आई मोर पॉइंट कोडिंग इन बॉक्स 
it may not be it, what is it, why do you see blast regions which malignancy uh, so so in uh, metastasis of tumors from the prostate and breast sir okay good okay. great now so suppose there is a metastasis from lungs there will be lytic huh? yes so what is this is this metastasis from lungs N- no sir uh, what are the hallmarks so, of mri on for cox tell us what is that white shadow in sir. front of the spine so there is a pre vertebral abscess sir mm. why is this pre vertebral abscess why not this is aorta uh so aorta would look grayish and uh, blackish sir the flowing blood so what looks bright on uh so in- inflammatory exudates or edema sir any fluid abs- fluid so is a fl- free fluid there that Please. may look bright Okay, like CSF. Yes, sir. So this is a f- lot of fluid there. So in co- metastases, you may not see that much of pre-vertebral abscess. Yes, sir. yes. Sir. In Cox, because of lysis, there is a lot of granulation which is fluid. So this is maybe an active Cox. Yes, sir. So how do you see hematoma? Suppose this uh, was a fracture, burst fracture. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How does hematoma sir, look on MRI? So hematoma would look, uh, sir, low on T1 and T2 images, sir. So as a uh, low signal, sir. We could uh, see a dark, a darkish, blackish lesion, sir. <laughs> Safe. Hematoma में तो fluid होता है ना? Yes, sir. So, but uh, it, is, sir. it is en- encapsulated, sir. नहीं फ्रैक्चर में एनकैप्सुलेट है सर सपोज देयर इज अ बर्स फ्रैक्चर देयर इज अ हेमाटोमा इन द एपिडर्मल स्पेस देयर इज हेमाटोमा एंटीरियरली हाउ विल दैट लुक अच्छा मैं रिफ्यूज हां नहीं सर आप बोलिए आप एक्सप्लेन कर रहे हैं ये वाला एमआरआई कर दीजिए कॉक्स वाला सो दिस इज अ डिफ्यूज ब्राइट एनहांसमेंट ऑफ द area in t2 so that is which is a fluid pass there that is that's a sign of active in hematoma yes. it will be speckled there will be because of the pigment there will be speckled presence so it will be dark and white together heterogeneous yes. basically right. huh. so, yes heterogeneous yes plus there is Abhi. more uh-huh. a paradiscal lesion here it, it is not a central lesion it is not a what are the types of uh, radiological appearances of cox uh, so uh, Uh, so type so radiological appearance of clock so it can be uh, either paradiscal it can be yeah. anterior it what can happens be central. in paradiscal uh, so paradiscal sir there will be erosion of the end plates sir so there And is this place this space. this space collapse yes this sir uh, it looks like the loss of this space then yes sir so it's a block next, bone formation uh, so next the, it can be anterior central or appendiceal or synovial sir So anterior ways when there is anterior involvement of the anterior half of the vertebra involved, what will happen yes, in that? Sir, uh, so there will be a uh, kyphotic ky- formation, sir. There will be a kyphotic deformation. There will be wedging. There will be com- collapse wedging. anteriorly, so it will be like a wedge vertebra. Yes, yes. Plus there will be an anterior abscess. There will be an anterior abscess, like in this case. Yes. Third. Hmm. Uh, so third, a uh, central, sir. It can be a concentric central, collapse. Which, uh, how will central present? So it will. It can present as vertebra plana or central concentric column. Yes, good. It will be like a panic fish, plan fish vertebra like yeah, collapse, central collapse. Yes. Hey, Then the there is. Ah, ah, okay, sir. Tell me, tell me. Then fourth. Ah, uh, so fourth appendiceal, which could be at the. Uh, yeah, element. Okay. So, so your voice was breaking. Sir. Sorry. Posterior element cox will be posterior yes, appendiceal. Sir. Yes, sir. and the Then, lastly, spinal what, what is spinal is tumor the, syndrome? Uh, so, spinal tumor syndrome is when the spinal cord gets compressed because of uh, granulation tissue due to infective uh, cox or abscess or pus or caseous tissue, sir. Mm. So that leads to this compression. This was a term which was used pre MRI era when there was an abscess going directly into the dural space, causing. Uh, distal neuro deficit so they will present as a neoplastic lesion although there will be no radiological lesion but now with yes. mri these things can be picked up very early so you don't actually get get to see spinal tumor syndrome yes okay now rohan was asking you some question 
नहीं सर वही सी मैत्री अंडरस्टैंड आर दी अदर एग्जाम गोइंग कैंडिडेट ऑल्सो वॉचिंग दिस ऑल ऑफ देम आर राइट Oh, yes sir this is how you differentiate what dhar sir exactly wanted you to know was that see there are very tell tale signs that this is not i'm not thinking this is cox but you can easily differentiate spondylodiscitis from tumor i will tell you how one is see you you see decrease this space whereas there is this space preservation in tumors okay second yes, is there is prevertebral and paravertebral abscess extension which you don't see in uh, uh, tumors thirdly yes. if you take the axial cuts and if you take the pedicular cuts in the sagittal levels the posterior part is involved more so you have a pedicular blow out more that is why on x ray yes. when it comes to metastases or even primary tumors you see that winking owl sign because they have that affinity for the pedicle more than pedicle, the yes, anterior and, part of the body which anterior. is more like cox is essentially an anterior disease lekin agar tu yes. tumors dekhega to tumor mein pedicular vertebral dono blow ho jate hain जहां पे तुझे पर्टिकुलर डिफ्रेंसिएशन नहीं मिलता है सो दीज आर सम साइंस व्हिच यू कैन इजीली डिफ्रेंशिएट नो लाइक दिस विल आल्सो हेल्प यू टू डिफ्रेंशिएट बिटवीन एन ऑस्टियोपोरोटिक कंप्रेशन फ्रैक्चर बिकॉज़ द प्रिजर्वेशन ऑफ दिस स्पेस आई मीन गिवन द फैक्ट दैट पैराडिकल फॉर्म ऑफ कॉक्स इज वेरी कॉमन उसको छोड़ के छोटे मोटे हैं जैसे कि एंटीरियर और सेंट्रल है बट अनटिल प्रूवन अदरवाइज reservation of this space is something which would take me to other options and other diagnoses also and not just leave it to infective okay yes sir thank you sir oh and hmm. yes. then uh, what medications sir. patient is taking uh, sir currently the patient is on multi drug regime sir of tuberculosis he is uh, she is currently taking tablet bidacolin which is uh, current uh, 400 mg a day for Uh, one week followed by 200 mg of uh, thrice a week for 22 weeks followed by sir a levofloxacin uh, which is twice two tablets a day uh, then linezolid 600 mg then clofazimin mm. 100 mg and cyclosporine which is 1000 mg sir. so these are all the drugs which are used for mdr tb right yes sir now when this patient is on so many drugs yes sir. what additional drugs we are supposed to give to the patient apart from this second line drugs or mdr drugs so i would like to give vitamin b6 supplements as pyridoxine sir and okay. protein powder as well okay 2 3 uh so uh, calcium supplements as well calcium supplement okay anything else um yes sir uh, sir and uh, if uh, required sir uh, any uh, analgesics and pain killers okay for pain you will give analgesics anything else yes, sir uh, sir uh, st- steroids or corticosteroids no at all required corticosteroids why role no, of corticosteroids no. in this uh no sir i i won't give sir vitamin d vitamin d yes sir okay and since yes. this patient is on mdr drugs yes sir. okay how will you yes, monitor this patient when so she is monitor, on so many drugs uh so i would like to what get things you will monitor hmm. yes sir so firstly a cute a cute cute prolongation which is a side effect and of bilateral don't drug. talk i fi first you tell that i will do a baseline ecg ECG sir. Yes. Talk, talk. No things which are acceptable. I know you know that it is QT prolongation. So you will take Sorry. one basic baseline ECG and one yes. medical reference. Reference, yes. Sir. Okay, that is one. Second, yes. Sir. Uh, so then, uh, sensor liver function and renal function tests. What will you check in that? Uh, sir, raised HGOT and HGPT. Okay. And in uh, renal function else? test, sir. Uh, alkaline phosphate sir serum alkaline phosphate alkaline phosphate is or serum creatinine you will check sir serum creatinine sir yes sir in renal function test serum bilirubin yes sir serum anything else also. anything else you will monitor uh, sir esr and crp of the two which one you will prefer uh, sir esr sir why uh, so because uh, uh, tuberculosis is a chronic disease and marks increased esr now why not crp as so a crp is an acute uh, inflammatory marker uh, it is a acute phase reactant phase reactant yes sir uh, 
is there any role of surgery now in this patient uh, so uh, according to me so i would lock, not like to go for operative management so i would like to uh, follow a strict bed rest with brace and uh, start uh, like the anti tubercular medication sir see the she is already on no already she yes, is on mm. yes sir and sir uh, give her a brace preferably a tailor's brace and mm. monitor her esr crp and x rays once in every 3 months and get a mri and ct after 6 months uh, after every 6 months for 2 years sir now since this is a case of mdr tuberculosis and the yes, this Uh, Bedaquil and all are started just I think so four five days before, no? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Yeah. So now yes. when will you do the MRI? So yes. I will uh, do an MRI, sir, after six months, sir. Me, one month. Six months will be too late. Okay, okay. Sir, uh, your answer should be ideally after twelve, three months, between okay. three and four months, okay. or if the patient is showing any signs of. Neurologic deficit. Yes. Sir. If the patient in between, if she is on MDR TB and shows signs of uh, neurological progressive neurological involvement or there is bladder bowel involvement, you have to first go and do the MRI. Yes. Rohan. Ah, uh, maybe when when operate this. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Rubber, right? I am just saying. So, so. 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 Professor Dar, Professor Butala, Baba, my spine नहीं है. And uh, <laughs> Professor uh, Assistant Professor Gala, हम लोग क्या है General Orthopedic इधर उधर कुछ तो थोड़ा बहुत आता है इधर उधर. Biopsy किया था क्या मैं इतने? Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. So biopsy proved out to be tuberculosis. Uh, with, with अच्छा why would you treat it conservatively? What are the uh, indications so is, of surgery in TB? So there is uh, no progressive neurological deficit. For more than uh, three weeks, sir, after starting anti-tubercular drugs, uh, then, sir, mm. there is no. In case there is worsening neurological deficit, in case there is any recurrence of neurological deficit, in case there is any complications or bowel bladder involvement, then I would prefer surgery. Surgery with what? Yes, sir. So which level? No. So this is at uh, dorsal lumbar junction, sir, at D10, D11, and D12, L1, sir. This surgery so is box yeah, at junctional uh, level any different? Uh, so, sorry, sir, I didn't get the question. Abhi aaya. Also, surgery I would recommend. Box at junctional level any different? Does it behave different? Uh, I hope you yes, understood the question, na, my dear. Hmm. Yes, sir. So different, uh, different levels can be different uh, affiliation with the surgery, sir. Why is cox in thoracic spine common? Uh, sir, th- uh, cox is more common in thoracic lumbar junction because it's a uh, mobile, sir. Okay, is it really thoracic lumbar junction or thoracic spine? It's so, a thoracic spine, sir. Sorry, sir. Uh, sir, yeah, and it's why? a spongy cancellous, spongy cancellous bone. There is more uh, weight bearing. There is high chances of micro fractures, and there is presence of kidneys and cisterna chile close to it, sir. Thoracic spine, where are the kidneys? और स्पॉन्जी बोन क्या है वो तो हर बोन तो एक ही जैसा रहता है स्पॉन्जी क्या है For this patient, sir, I would like to go for a posterior decompression uh, with draining of abscess and debridement and uh, uh, stabilization with pole pedicle screws, two segments above and two segments below the diseased vertebra, sir. Hmm. Why posterior decompression? Maitre, you will do laminectomy. No, sir. No, sir. I will not do laminectomy. Why posterior? posterior? Uh, exactly. Posterior, brother. Uh, Uh, so, or so there is another approach uh, of anterior lateral decompression, sir. No, no. Uh, forget the approach. Can you go anterior approaches. wire? Yeah. Can you go anterior wire and all posterior approach? If yes, then what are the approaches? Uh, sir, for cervical, thoracic, and lumbar, there are different approaches, sir. So thoracic, for cervical, thoracic. Sir, uh, so for. So, so for. 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 So
So for uh, thoracic, sir, uh, we can do a lateral brachiotomy and modified costo transfer sectomy, sir. Yeah, okay. Lateral brachiotomy. What okay, is that? Uh, sir, it's mostly, sir, for... Huh? Okay. Sir, uh, so you uh, take the capnus incision and then go for an anterolateral decompression according Costo to Menard's procedure. Costo transfer sectomy. So for anterolateral decompression... You mean to say costo transfer sectomy? Yes, sir. Costo transfer to me, what is it? It's the removal of the rib with transfer process of the vertebra to decompress. Mm. The uh, and, sir, uh, so you remove the pedicle and remove, debride the vertebra. And what yeah, disadvantage is this? Why this, uh, we don't sir, do this surgery now? So there is high chances of uh, injury to the yeah. spinal cord. And uh, so there can be recurrence. I think it's injury to spinal cord. Look, the spinal cord. Go to. Don't see. What will happen when you remove the pedicle? Uh, so unstable, sir. So, hmm. yes. so it is an indirect decompression. It is not. You are not actually decomp. Where is the abscess? Abscess is anterior. The posterior yes, retropulsion is anterior to the core. So you're not going to the anterior, you're going to the lateral and posterior side of the core. Yes. Besides, it was removing the pedicle. So it is the pedicle is the strongest part of the bone. So causes yes. more lateral I'm subluxation still. or collapse of so scoliosis. So late onset deficit were very common. Yes. So what was the improvement on costo transfer? Uh, uh, How is the evolution kya hua surgeries? Ka? कॉस्टो ट्रांसफर सेक्टर में के बाद क्या आ गया यू सेड ना एंटीरियर लैटरल डिकंप्रेशन व्हाट इज दैट यस सर सर आफ्टर द कॉस्टो ट्रांसफर सेक्टर में सर वी डू फिक्सेशन सर नहीं नहीं एंटीरियर लैटरल डिकंप्रेशन क्या होता है सो ओनली डिकंप्रेशन सर नो फिक्सेशन सर अरे कहां से होता है सर एंटीरियर लैटरल क्या बोल रहे हो चेंज क्या कॉस्टो ट्रांसफर सेक्टर में भी सेम ही है ना कॉस्टोट्रांसिसरियोलैटरल Then came anterior. Anterior means you go directly anterior, trans diaphragmatic, trans um, uh, through the lungs, or yes. in the retro peritoneum. So that is anterior. You remove the anterior part of the body and go anterior. Yes. Now what we do? Uh, we have come back to posterior. Yes, sir. Because everything can be done from the posterior. Only yes. thing is that if you are creating instability by doing posterior only, so that is why you had instruments. You had implants. Yes, sir. So that is instrumented posterior decompression. Yes. That can be either only posterior or 360 degree. That is, you go anterior as well as posterior from the back side. Yes. Yes. Which is currently being followed. Even we can yes. do minimally invasive also. Yes. Sir. So all this is evolution of surgeries. Yes. Sir. So now hardly anybody does anterolateral or costotransectomy. Okay. Costotransectomy yes. only recommended in children now. To Acute emergencies where you want to decompress quickly. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, thank you. Chalo, or kuch hai? Hmm. Hello, India. It is nine forty-five. Okay. Chalo, thank you. Thank you. I thank you all, Doctor Dar Sir, Doctor Butala, Doctor Rohan, Maitre. Yes, above sir. average presentation, not good, but above average. Yes, thank you. Sir. थैंक द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स डॉक्टर नीरज और वो थैंक यू वेरी मच अरे एग्जाम में मिला इसमें मिला दोनों को में चलो बाय एवरीबॉडी थैंक यू सो मच बाय सो बाय बाय
सूतिया गहन मार्ग Thank you.